excited for today's conversation uh, of leadership conversations with Megan and Steve. I'm Steve, obviously, and you're Megan. And we have Sarah. How do you say your last name, Sarah? Being dyslexic, I'm going to let you say it properly. Lewikowski. Lewikowski. Sarah Lewikowski. Um, and so today we're going to talk really mental health, right? Mental well-being, mental health. Uh, since we've been cooped up for three, four weeks and we're uh, staring down the pipe, as you might say, for multiple more and then creating some kind of new normal, whatever that might be. Um, and so Megan has been pushing mental health since the minute I told her we should do these things. Um, I think I said no for a very long time because I really wasn't ready to have a mental health conversation. Um, she might not know that, but I wasn't ready. Um, and I, I guess I'm in my comfy purple chair, so I'm ready now. Uh, or we're just going to go for it, ultimately, right, Megan? It's needed. It's, it's needed. Necessary right it's now, needed. everybody I'm talking to is struggling, I think, in one way yeah. in that space, day to day. Yeah, absolutely. So, Sarah, thank you for joining us on this conversation about mental health. Uh, can you just give us uh, and the people that are watching sort of an who you are, where you're from, what organization you participate in, and just sort of lead us in a, in a, in a beginning sort of what you're thinking. Absolutely, so thank you for inviting me here. Um, so my name's Sarah Lewikowski, and I'm the Executive Director of Mosaic Counseling. Mosaic Counseling, uh, formerly known as TCM Counseling, uh, actually started in 1977 in Grand Haven, as Tri-Cities Ministries. And so for many, many years was Tri-Cities Ministries, maybe about, about six years ago, shortened the name up to TCM uh, legally. And uh, we were growing so much and we were in, we've been in schools for about 10 years, uh, providing services to students right at their school. Um, we we're expanding beyond Ottawa County and so it was time that we, the board, decided that we really needed a name that wasn't um, geographically specific anymore, mm -hmm. and not Tri-Cities, and came up with the name Mosaic after uh, a grant to, and uh, worked with a great company out in Grand Rapids called Well Design, and helped us land on that name Mosaic. Um, I used to be one of the therapists on the panel at, uh, at Mosaic. Um, back in probably 2002, 2004, and 2004 became the director. And so I've been okay. there now. This is my 17th year as executive director. Great. And what does Mosaic generally do? Is it just come in, meet with a counselor, or what? what is, what is the breadth of what you guys operate and do then? Right. So what makes us uh, unique is if anyone lives or works or worships or attends school in Ottawa County, we have made a commitment, a promise that we will not turn you away. And so we have a very small staff, but we have 75 therapists who we work with, we contract with them. And so when people don't have insurance or they might be underinsured, so they have insurance, but they have a, a large deductible, um, we're able to make sure that they're able to see one of those therapists uh, for all the way down to maybe $6 uh, a copay, a session to see a therapist who normally would charge $100, $150 per hour. But we are a nonprofit and we are community supported. So we're supported by United Way and individuals and foundations and churches, um, grants, and fundraisers. Right. Can you um, give us an understanding of how life has changed for you guys then? Obviously, you're doing more of these Zoom calls and stuff, but even as an organization saying you're a non-for-profit, like, how are you being funded right now? How are you operating? And I'm sure the need uh, is very great right now or greater than ever before. I talked to my counselor for five minutes and he said, Steve, do you want your two o'clock? This was last week uh, or not. I said, I'm really pretty good. Do you have a need? And he said, yeah, I could fill your slot 10 times over. If you feel good, I'm fine with some like, and so it was, uh, that was a real eye opener for me of. 
like, wow, okay, uh, there's need. So how are you balancing the need to also making sure that you have the funding to operate? So first of all, Steve, that was really awesome that you just said that you're in counseling. I mean, that that is all about, you know, reducing that stigma um, to hopefully eventually eliminate it, that people feel like they need to keep that quiet. And certainly it is it is a thing that is some people want to keep confidential, but it's important when pastors and heads of organizations and businesses and people who are out and about say that, it, it just makes people feel like, okay, I don't have to be ashamed of that. Um, Absolutely. So, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so these are, these are tricky times for nonprofits. Uh, nonprofits are really, um, you know, these are the times that their services are needed more than ever, and then funding can go down. You know, I was at Mosaic when the economy tanked about 10 years mm -hmm. ago, and that was really hard, but that was different than this. And it was different because we had a, our major fundraiser was coming up on May 2nd. It's a Kentucky Derby themed fundraiser. And first you, you know, the board of directors and myself and some staff are thinking about, okay, what are we still going to have it? And then the decision's taken away. You know, you, you're absolutely right. not going to have it. No nonprofit is going to have a fundraiser right now. So that was our major fundraiser and probably was going to bring in seventy to a hundred thousand dollars. Well that's a that's a major hit to us. So we had to make some really, really tough decisions. And I mentioned that we have seventy five therapists, but our right. staff is very small. When I started, I was the only staff person. But we have a huge staff now, huge staff now of uh, seven. Well, we actually had to lay off five of our staff. So that's the majority of our staff is temporary, temporarily laid off right now. And that was a really hard decision and really, right. um, really a sad decision to have to make because you care about, you know, your staff so much and to have right. to call them and let them know that. Um, but it was in order to make sure that when people needed counseling, that they were still going to be able to reach out to us. So everything for us right now is virtual. Um, the office, the physical office itself is closed, and I'm working out of my home. And um, the other staff person is working out of her home, and she's doing all of our, still all of our accounting and bookkeeping and all of that. And so amazing. Um, stuff that I just I just don't know how to do and uh, luckily we have a couple amazing interns right now so right now when people call our office we can do intakes what we used to do mostly in person um, but sometimes over the phone we're doing those all exclusively right now over the phone but we're still able to match people up with that therapist that's right for them so presenting issue um, you know, insurance, no insurance, um, you know, what age and, and all that, we're able to do that. So our therapists are offering teletherapy right now. What yeah. I have found is that we're not as busy as I thought we were going to be just because teletherapy is a little bit different mm -hmm. and it's not for everyone or maybe they don't know it would work for them. So I have had some feedback from our therapist who have said that some of their current clients, at least in the beginning, have said, hey, I'll wait a few weeks to see you in person. But we don't know how long those weeks are going to be now. You know, now it's going to be right. another few weeks. So people are starting to come back and say, okay, I will, I will take you up on the teletherapy right now. Yeah. Sir, can you um, guide me through... Uh, the process that you had to mentally go through to lay people off and those hard conversations you had to have with them and then the anger and frustration those people probably felt. Because I have, uh, you know, we've had to adjust payroll a little bit, obviously, in my office. We're waiting for all these loans to come through. People are asking, should they apply or not for uh, assistance? Um, and so, and I, I have obviously talked to many leaders that are still struggling to this day of, who do I lay off? 
and who do I not? And build my organization. Now I'm telling them that they need to be laid off and that resentment and, and that, those ugly feelings come out right away. Is like, didn't I do my job? Well, am I not valuable? Like you just had to do that, right? You just had to lay five people off. And I'm sure that that, those feelings came right out, you know, they understand, but to a point of also upset, right? I can't imagine any human being, no matter what, what they do, aren't, aren't feeling less than because of being laid off. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. And I know that I'm not, I'm not the only one, how many different places for profit, um, nonprofit have had to do that right now. Cause that's the last thing you want to do the right. last thing. Um, but you know, it was that on, you know, it's not, I don't like to say perfect storm cause that makes it sound perfect. It's a non-perfect imperfect storm where the fundraiser, the, you know, the, the loss of, of income of revenue and the right. increase in, um, you know, in services that you have to make those. Uh, it broke, I mean, it, you know, this is now on live Facebook. Um, this, it, it broke my heart. I mean, just yeah. broke it in half uh, to call each person. Um, and some of them are watching right now to call them individually and, uh, and let them know that news. Because, you know, hopefully you, you're a team with those people that you work with and you're a family. And it's uh you just lost your family so we have and, it, and it, yeah it's hard not to take things personally that's human nature you know yeah what did i do and to just to try to convey this is this is taking sadly this is taking a couple steps back to take more steps forward and you know yes the organization's been around for 43 years, but you know what that word that we keep hearing, it's unprecedented. It's mm -hmm. just unprecedented. And what then you, then you have to turn to survival mode. So it's not, what are we going to do to keep things comfy, but what are we going to do to keep moving forward as an organization? as a nonprofit that's going to continue then to become such a or is such a safety net for so many people. And to remember this is this is temporary. It's right. just temporary. And you know, we have tried to stay together. Uh, you know, this would be then for anybody, you know, to be checking in with people and checking in with your staff and how are you doing and making sure that they have resources. And we've had a couple virtual happy hours, you know, where we can check in on everyone. How are you doing? You know, what have you done that's fun? And so, but yeah, that it's just the only, the only upside is that making sure you're going to keep moving forward. Hopefully, um, in, in my case for Mosaic, it, I can say we will be bringing everyone back to keep moving forward, to keep growing the organization. We were, you know, at the beginning of 2020, I remember starting the year and just being so excited because of the name change and we'd expanded outside of, of, of Ottawa County and we were helping people. We're the, the um, mental health portion of the Holland Promise. So for those college mm. students in Holland that are going to school all over Michigan, we've been providing mental health services to them in Ann Arbor and Lansing and Kalamazoo and Big Rapids. So, you know, those things were so exciting and you know, we, we are still doing that. It's, it's hard for, for all of us when you are on this momentum of, just either helping more people or whatever whatever you're doing to then have to step back like this. Yeah, can Karen, we Karen jumped in right away and said, We're not angry. We're always committed, even out of the office, the best director and the most oh. wonderful staff ever. So that's pretty kind. There you go. That's yeah. pretty kind. Um I got the opportunity to do the in 
like um when I at least put that out there I um I had some situational issues I had someone who was close to our family um commit suicide and had been uh, at Mosaic and a supporter along with my husband and our companies um but then got to be on the other side of it because I was just noticing in myself that I was I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word depressed. I would use the word uh, melancholy or kind of gray. Um, and if there is someone out there, you know, who's looking for that space, um, I had all of the sort of apprehensions, like, but I'm going to walk in that office as somebody who's been buying tables at events and raising my paddle and now say, I need help. Um, and this is something that I'm not capable of navigating, um, especially the, the suicide and the, um, the quickness of that um and we're coming up on the anniversary of that space so if there is someone out there uh who feels like they need that space um what i can tell you is the respect and the amount of time that mosaic takes in figuring out who you should sit with and what those individual counselors have um to be able to offer um, that was my second experience, you know, seeing somebody, um, I seem to have stuff fly up from the basement and then can navigate for a little while and then realize like this isn't really working. Um, I was just incredibly impressed having been a supporter on one side and then a user on the other side. Um, but I, I think it's interesting what you said about how people right now aren't comfortable in that space. And we had the conversation with Tracy Wilson about how we feel like we're all teachers, but we're not teachers. We're meant just to be, what was her wording? She said, um, the person, the person in between, right? So the, right. the person who's helping to get the, the work started, um, but not necessarily teaching it. I feel like a little bit, we're all counselors of people right now too. And, that's a hard space to be in because I think most of us want to try to fix it. Um, and that's how we do real estate, right? Like we, well, we could do this, or we could do this, or we can negotiate the deal this way. What are the tools in just helping somebody to sit with that? I mean, is it okay just to say that sucks and I'm sorry that you're in this space right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, because because we can't fix it right now, can we? I mean, we just can't. It it you know it it is what it is. This is what we're living in, and it kind of changes every day, and we're not quite sure exactly how it's going to look. And we all we all have different feelings about it and different experiences, and we know different people. But I always think you know the difference between being that friend and listening if if you feel like you're doing it over and over and over um and the person really just keeps reaching out you can always say hey listen i want to be your friend and i will always continue to be your friend or your sister or you know whatever that relationship is but you can always reach out to mosaic or another place too when you need just that extra little hey maybe some professional health or, or that person that's not a friend or family to talk to um, i do you know at some point really want or just to give out our phone number to say hey it's that easy just to call us um, right now you're going to get me <laughs> Um, on the phone. Normal, normally you would get Karen and Karen's probably listening and she's one of the sweetest human beings you'll ever meet in your entire life and that's why it's so important for her to answer the phones. Um, but right now you're going to get me. But uh, yeah, that Megan and thank you too for mentioning, you know, that that you called us not just to sponsor, not just to sponsor, to sponsor, but also when you wanted to reach out for some counseling too. Um, you know that we are there for you and we all of our therapists we, they have availability right now and they're they're ready um, even if you don't want say weekly or bi-weekly counseling and you don't have a space that you can 
to go to the tower student right. just to check in, just to chat for 10 minutes if you want to. Mm -hmm. Sarah, can you, uh, so maybe we need to go into my counseling session now because I need help. Um, so can you help me think through, which I think you, you have mentioned this, just this, the quickness of this, right? Like I'm used to like forecasting. I like to say like, man, my talent is to look ahead and I usually know what's coming four weeks out or five weeks out or a couple months out. And if I do these things, it will equal this. Like, uh, and so, you know, like, like you, I had just, I just opened my brokerage this year, reopened super excited and amy you know just was uh we were just talking just a minute ago uh and she said you, you know how do you feel and i said hey we these financial things are working out the small business loan is working out and she says good do you think you could start painting the house uh and i was like really like no that wasn't in my agenda like no i i don't want to paint the house but i will write the list right um so I know I'm just babbling right now, but like this came on so fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like there's this process that I consistently am going through, which is this like grieving phase to be like, I'm going to kill it. I'm great. Let's paint the house or let me make an office in my garage. And that's cool. Right. Like, and then like an hour later, I'll be, what the heck just happened to me? Why am I? Did I not eat enough food? Why am I depressed right now compared to like, I was fine 15 minutes ago. Can you, can you help process that with, I guess, using me as that example, if you want to, but I, I think there's a lot of us out there that are just go-getters that are used to going. And so slowing down is scary for one, um, but not just slowing down. It's like slowing down in your face. Like, sorry, today you're done. Like you, you need to sit back. I yell at Megan every time that I'm still working, but I know that's just fooling myself. I'm not fully working, but I'm not willing to give that up mentally. So I'm just rambling. So you take it over from there. But <laughs> Wow, there's so many I, I, different ways I can yeah. go right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one, okay. So one of the things is you're right. This happened so quick. I, I remember I was at a meeting and someone said, hey, I think the schools are going to close down. And that was the first time I'd heard that. It's like, no, no way for, for a few weeks. It's like, no, no, that couldn't possibly happen. And then it did for, you know, a certain amount of uh, weeks. And then, you know, here we are at the, looking at the whole school year and the, the buildings. Um, I keep you know, catching myself, school's not over, just the buildings, you know, going into the schools. Right. It almost seems like it's been better that we're getting this in increments instead of the first day hearing it, hearing they'll be closed down for the rest of the school year. That would have been unbelievable. Um, so starting with a couple weeks and then thinking, well, I think it's going to be a few more. Uh, and, and you're, you know, you're right, Steve, we move so fast right now. I mean, we are moving so fast all the time. This has taken that away from us mm -hmm. and really taken control away from us. I think that's a big, a, I think that's almost like at the center of a lot of the things that we're feeling is it's out of our control, but we keep trying to make it part of, we want to have control over it and we just there's just things that we just don't have control over right now so then it becomes all right i need to think about every day now what can i have control over so when i'm working from home and it's 11 and I'm still in my pajamas and now i feel really lousy because i'm still in my pajamas and i'm working um, to just think about those little things every day that you have control over. So, you know, I'm going to get up and I'm going to exercise and I have control over that and I can decide whether or not to do that or I can decide to eat right or, you know, hide, hide food, um, <laughs> eat a lot of gummies. Uh,
What kind uh, of you know, I got the troll sour gummy. Yeah. And like, it's a 28 ounce bag, the big bag. And I think there's three empties in the basement right now. <laughs> so you've done some hoarding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gummies. Of the, uh, the troll. You know, yeah. but really thinking about what, you know, what um what things that we control and I you know I was one of those people too who if I didn't have ten things to do and ten more things waiting for me once I got done with those ten things and then I wanted to have twenty things always that I could do at one time I just can't I I, I don't have them anymore and so it really has forced us all to to not only try to think about what we can have control over but also oh, we have to slow down a bit and that is being forced upon us so instead of thinking you know negatively thinking about it um you know I, I can't go out and do this i can't do this i can't see my family members um but what can i do what can i do that three months ago there's no way i would have sat down and read a book no way wouldn't have had even the thought that's not part of, of what I have time to do, but you know what, now, now I can. And so, you know, thinking about, you know, playing board games with your kids and, and all the different things that maybe you can do right now, you're just thinking about it all in a different space than two months ago, a month ago, what we had to do every day just to keep up, just to keep up. Is routine a part of outside of a pandemic and us all being shut down and told we're not essential? Is that a tool that therapists would normally recommend to somebody who'd been through some trauma, keeping routine yeah, we, in the day? Okay, because that, I mean, that's one of the things that is sorted for me, like waking up pretty much the same time, Jack and Henry do the same things, mm -hmm. working out pretty much the same time, you know, Steve put me on these videos, so now I have to shower and wash my hair every like three days or whatever. But I feel like, I don't know that, but I feel like that is something that the new normal, and my dad is an addict who hasn't, you know, um, drank in 30 years and he's furloughed. And so we had a conversation the other day, like he has coffee, he wakes up, he has his coffee, he does his day like this, and now there's this big gap. And that was one of the conversations like mm -hmm. you need to go out and work on your triumph motorcycles you need to figure out what else you're going to do inside of this space right yeah routine especially for kids right now for all those kids who are at home for those parents um really working on it's important for them to have a routine they're used to it i mean when they're in school they have that and so trying to come up with a routine, a schedule for them. Um, something else, well, I guess we're, I, I moved over maybe to kids, is, uh, you know, it is going to be really important for them to have some sort of connection to their peers. So, you know, if there had been really strict, hypothetically, really strict guidelines at home on, communicating or social media or phone time or, or whatever it was, maybe that's realizing that's pretty important for them. They used to see those, those people every day, mm -hmm. those peers. And so that, you know, that kind of normal that we can have some control over, that would be really important for them. That's hard. Yeah. Um, how are you? Uh, so another thing that I have noticed of myself and then of, uh, of uh, many people that I talk to is the sleeping issues right now. Uh, and it seems as though the pattern of sleep is different, right? I used to sleep like nobody's business and we lights out at 9.30, uh, you know, up at five, away you go. And now like every couple hours you wake up and you're tossing, right? Um, and I, I've had that conversation with three people today. It's like, man, I can't get good sleep. Uh, I can't, I, I am tired. I'm yawning at 11 o'clock, right? Uh, I'm falling back to bed on, on the couch because it's like, what else are you going to do? Uh, so can you help? Is that, is that part of this like grieving process? Is that part of the, just the. 
the stress that yep. they give some so clarity into, into that, that for me. too, Steve. Like I, I always struggle to sleep and now yeah. I do it all because I'm not spinning on the deal that I need to get done or the problem with yeah. the client or whatever. So I think other people are now oversleeping. The opposite. opposite. Yeah. At 10 o'clock and waking up at 9, 930 and going, how am I ever going to go back to work? And that's a simple <laughs> question, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it is what you're, what you're both saying, just different for different people. It's affecting people differently, more sleep, less sleep, trouble sleeping, um, eating, eating's different now. I mean, if you're home all day, which I miss my tacos. I really want a good taco. Too. A lot. <laughs> I yeah. could cry over tacos right now. I mean, just real good taco, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, Sarah, you were on a roll. Oh, no. Sorry. No. That um, self-medicating, mm -hmm. doing some more drinking, maybe than normal. Uh, saw in the news yesterday. There's been more DUIs just recently, or there's been an increase in that. So you know, all those people just, you know coping that way so thinking about what so what can we all do what can we do to you know have some coping at home um i would say take breaks from the news mm. you know if you're a big news watcher um and now take breaks from from social media things have kind of reared up in the last couple days of just with the governor coming out and saying that the shelter in place is going to be through the end of the month mm -hmm. um, you know, just taking a break from from kind of getting pulled into that, um, that exercise, listening to your body, you know, eating healthy. We want to boost our immune system right now. Mm -hmm. And so all those different things that we can do to help boost our immune system. I mean, that's just that's just good anyway, but especially right now, um, trying to trying to get as much sleep as we possibly can. And then. You know, one thing that uh, can be helpful too that a therapist would say in a in a therapy session is suggesting journal journaling. So now you probably have more time than normal to do some journaling. You know, thoughts can race around in your head almost like a, a pinball game and going all over the place. But you can only write one word at a time, so it's almost like a thought funnel kind of, if you will, hmm. all that thinking and anxiety and stress and just writing your thoughts down, you know, writing you say, how you're feeling. Can you say that it. again? Like, uh, I never heard of that um, before. I, Megan, have you ever heard that idea? Like the idea of like, you can only write one word at a time. Mm -hmm. That's new to me. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it forces you when you write, you know, you have to, you can only write one word. So it just, it forces you to kind of start slowing down your thinking. And when you feel that, that spinning, that all going all over the place in, in every different direction. But yeah, journaling can be a, a extremely therapeutic uh, tool that you can do anytime, anywhere. And now we have a lot more, a lot more time to do that. And it can be about anything. It can be gratitude too, you know, like I, I've had agents where, you know, the Benjamin Franklin clothes, right, where you've got all of the reasons to buy and all the reasons not to buy on either side, you know, what are all the things that you're struggling with if you're not a big writer, you know, that's just a list. And then what are all the things that you have gratitude for um, on the other side of it too? I mean, I think staying in, in that space is is beneficial there are things that we still do have <laughs> that mm -hmm. aren't work yeah. um but yeah yeah we've got a great question that just came in uh from amanda and it says how do you recommend leaders adjust their approaches in times like these increasing space for vulnerability in meetings or leading by example by speaking honestly about their fears I love that. Uh, so yeah. So how do you recommend leaders adjust their approach, basically, in in this time, and and are there different things that they should think about when they're leading people than they used to before? You know, I would 
I would point out any people you're leading um, to, to get to know um, where where are they all at? Where's your staff all at? You know, what are the things that are on their mind? You know, do they have family members that are healthcare workers? Um, do they have, you know, um, loved ones who, who have it, who have the, the COVID-19? You know, so you're in touch and know, know their stories. Um, empathy, lots and lots of empathy. You know, everyone's working conditions are, are different. It's not, it's just not as easy. We don't have all of our tools, you know, with us at, at, at this time. My, my office at home looks a lot different than my office at work. And sometimes it takes me longer to do things or um, it's, it's harder to get information than, uh, than it would be. So, you know, and then, yeah, being honest with them. Um, it's a, it's that tightrope then of not uh, wanting to cause a panic, mm -hmm. but be transparent and be honest also about things that, um, you know, that maybe you do have some, some worries about some things, but, but that's why we're going to do this and that you're thinking about, and then you're asking for input. Um, from people about what what they think and do they have any ideas so but that's you know and I would also connect in Ottawa County we have amazing support organizations and support organizations for the support organizations so if any say nonprofit leader is not part of Lakeshore Nonprofit Alliance I would um, as soon as you're done with this sign up um, they have been a huge uh, huge help at this time. Um, mm -hmm. It's Lakeshore Nonprofit Alliance, and we right now we have weekly Zoom meetings with executive directors and other people um, just to talk about these things together. And that question there um, could then be discussed with 35 different leaders in the county, and it's it's just a, so, such so helpful um, to bounce that kind of stuff off of of your peers then. So in an idea of like setting up a team meeting, right? You're on a Zoom call, you've got a process that you're working through or work that you have to do. Are you suggesting that, that you start with um, creating some space for that vulnerability at the beginning, just to have everybody check in and then say, okay, now it's time to focus on the task at hand? Or are you saying that's an offline conversation? We'll, we'll talk about that later. How are you balancing like the, I gotta get work done and or you know hey let's be vulnerable together here's our team how is the team going before we go to the next thing i would at least create the opportunity maybe everyone doesn't want to share right um, yeah but just creating that if someone does right yeah i think we already know right like mm -hmm. i think that's the mm -hmm. even if you try to be the tough guy as a leader I mean, everybody knows it's the first time ever my team turned around and said, but you know, you need to tell us what to do. And I'm like, I would love to tell you exactly what yeah. to do. But what I can tell you is right now, I don't know, because nobody knows, right? The SBA stuff is that came out, the unemployment stuff is that came out. But the minute that I do know, I will communicate with you immediately. Um, but that's, I mean, that's not a fun space to be in when normally you're the guy, like you call me and I tell you how to write the contract or what I would do in that situation. But we already know, and the gift of that vulnerability, I think is it's, it is where we truly meet each other from a heart center standpoint. It's where you can actually see, okay, we're all in this together and we can share the tools and resources that we have in that space, right? Like, I love that you I had no idea you were eating all the gummy bears and that that was like a thing for you. <laughs> Who knew we both missed tacos so much? Like, I could have cried the other day about tacos. Yeah. So that's where I think we actually get to be human in this, in the navigation. And what a beautiful gift that would be if we came out of it in that space to be able to say, Steve's got a counselor, I've had one before, probably will again the next time that something major, you know, triggers my life. I tell my kids all the time, um, you know, business coach, counseling coach, lacrosse coach, 
anytime our teacher, whatever. I mean, these are people who have the resources to be able to help, but there's no way we can do it. If you don't say, help me, you know, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, and, I, and I think it's also, uh, we had this conversation as a team this morning. It's okay to say that's not my spot as a leader now, even more so than normal, I think. So I don't know if you're doing that, Megan, or you are Sarah, but you know, we were talking this morning and, you know, the unemployment stuff came out for 1099 employees and it's here's the link and you can go in and figure it out. And so they're, they are looking to me as being the leader of Steve, should we do this? Should we not? And I finally just had to say today, I don't know. And that's something you need to decide for yourself. You are a 1099 employee. You have the link. I'm choosing not to right now because I feel empowered to work and I don't want to do that for me. But like for you, that might be the best decision, but I can't spend hours going through how an application works and is it or is it not okay. And I, at some point I felt guilty by saying that, but at the same time, it was so freeing for me to be like, nope, like that's not my lane right now. Like I can't be all things for you. Like I can lead our organization. I can talk about what we're going to do to list the house, right? I can do these conversations with Megan, but figuring out if you should be on unemployment right now, that's something that you've got to decide yourself, right? Like, so that's, that's different, right? That's, I'm not used mm -hmm. to being the guy like Megan, you're saying like, that doesn't tell them what to do, right? Um, to give people that space to be like, no, you gotta, you gotta just do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Are Are you seeing that too, Sarah? Are you starting to say like, it's not, not my world. I'm not in charge of that piece anymore. Or yeah, I know that I'm the only employee now, uh, so I need to take on more. How are you balancing that? Um, and how are you counseling people in that? Yeah, so um, I totally uh, agree with that feeling of, you know, not, I like to know things. And I like to know what to do in certain situations. And this whole you know, do you apply for this? Do you apply for that? And can you apply for both? And it's been really confusing um, to me. And no, I don't, I, I absolutely don't have every answer. And so you do have to be vulnerable and reach out to other people who might know more and ask them or do some investigation or say, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. And that's that's a hard thing to have to say and I don't know what's going to happen maybe in a month because as you know every couple of days maybe things are going to be different and to just we're sometimes we're on a on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis right now and that's you know yeah definitely give your permission give yourself permission to just say I, I just don't know right now if there's an empowering <laughs> Yeah, there's an empowering piece in that though too. Like a, a sweet friend of mine, Monica said years ago when you're on boards, if every single time the person who already knows the answer or can do the job just steps up, mm -hmm. then you always block somebody else from their journey and their ability to then move into that space. And so you're right, like that should be a conversation that you and your spouse have, who knows, you know, going through each individual team member and what their financial situation is and what their CPA would say, like that is not in any way our role. And I feel like as a leader, if I say anything more than this is available to all of you, this is what in our case, the National Association of Realtors and the Michigan Association of Realtors has said about it. And if you have a question for me that's not a CPA question or an attorney question, I'm happy to answer it. But there's a level of empowerment in being able to say, like, you got that, you got that. Like, yeah. you know, so that we don't, we don't, I don't want, I don't want people to be like, you got that mental health, you got that. <laughs> like, no, you don't yeah. got that. You know, you need to seek a professional in that space. But. Yeah. I think it's okay to say, I don't know what is best for your personal situation. This is what's available. Mm -hmm. um, go for it. Or talk to each other. You know, as the business right. owner or the nonprofit leader, our, search, our, our circumstances are very different than the people that we're leading, you know, in that space. What do you... Um, 
for writing pieces, like that's something that's heavy on my heart that we've sort of lost that was resilience and it was, you know, the Derby and it was so many gracious Brown, so many other people in Ottawa County. And I know in Kent too, cause we attend some of those events. How do you find a way to be able to make up for those resources? Or do you think people will give anyway as they come out of this? So we had a um, kind of a, I would say, um, emergency maybe board meeting, a board meeting that was not normally on a board meeting day. So to talk about that, when we had to decide, okay, we have to postpone the Derby. Um, not sure exactly what is going to come of that. If we're going to do something maybe virtual in the summer, try to do something in person. Um, but something that we did right away was send out a letter to all of our um, stakeholders. And then board members also presented that to people um, just to try to, to, to ask people if, um, you know, they weren't going to be going to the Derby, maybe what you would have spent on your dress or your hat, if you would still consider to donate that right now to Mosaic. And so we've been doing that right now um, in lieu of having it right now. And then we'll have to figure out exactly what that's going to look like um, probably in the summertime. But, you know, like, um, like Steve was saying, we can't even plan for that right now. We can't mm -hmm. say, yeah, it's going to be June 3rd. And, you know, we just have to kind of wait and see. And, uh, and that's where boards are amazing because they're ambassadors for what you do and people um, like you Megan um, people who have been supporters they continue to to be champions and however that looks for all these different nonprofits um, here because that's you know like 10 years ago um, the last thing that we want are all these agencies all these nonprofits who were taking care of everyone um, for something to happen and then not be here anymore. I mean, you're doing all kinds of things, whether it's it's food pantries, um, housing, uh, all the all the domestic violence, um, child advocacy center, all the different nonprofits are doing so much right now. Um, I do want to give a plug for again for Ottawa County. There's a Care Ottawa County. Um, it's care.ottawacounty.com, and that's United Way and the two foundations in Grand Haven and Holland Zealand, and they've all come together to put resources uh, on this website for all, the, all of the community. And one of the things that, that they've been promoting is for when people get their stimulus check, mm -hmm. if it's not something that they need to consider to donating part of it to one of the many nonprofits in Ottawa County. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, Amy and I just had that conversation at home, which it feels so small, but she keeps on asking why I haven't put my YMCA membership on hold. Uh, and I keep on, I keep on pushing that off. Right. And then she asked me this afternoon, like, Hey, have you put that on hold? I asked you three times, why have you not done so? And I said, because we have the money to pay for it and it's only 140 bucks which like if everybody puts their YMCA membership on hold, then how does the YMCA even pay for the gas? Right. Um, and so I think that that's where each of us, if we have the ability to do a little something we can right now. Right. Um, and so Sarah, the only thing, um, can you, can you maybe end us with some thoughts and that's for what I think is an underserved group of people which is, uh, which is the moms that are taking care of young children right now while their spouses are in the garages and in the laundry rooms. Um, and they're trying, you know, Amanda, who is my sister-in-law, uh, is beyond intelligent, has a very important job, but yet has two little ones at home. Her husband still works, right? So can you, can you speak to those, those women that are trying to do both that are that are uh entrepreneurial or that are working typically 
fathers, then time mothers, uh, and also their spouses are working. Like this idea, Afton, we're going to talk to you tomorrow. Her message to me from the kids' food basket is, I, I'm fine with being on your leadership conversation, Steve, tomorrow, but I am on kids' duty during that time. So I don't know what that's going to look like because my husband is working too, right? And so can you speak to those women for me that are, that are, that, that are out there that need a little, a little something extra? Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, uh, gosh, I don't know how many years I'd have to really think about it, but I, I would be in that boat. I mean, we were talking, you asked me if I had children before we came on and all of mine are 20 and up. So my at work, my at work life would look a lot different if they were all home right now. Um, I'm dedicating my whole day to Mosaic. I wouldn't, I just would not be able to do that with three little girls at home, say under 10 years old, there'd be no way. So I would say if you have, if there's two adults in the house, you know, to try to work out some sort of, of change every day, just to give the primary, maybe the primary caregiver um, some time uh, that they can do something where whether it's professional work or taking care of themselves, um, doing having teletherapy. You know, that's one of the reasons that I think that there isn't as much teletherapy as there would there would normally be is because we have so many kids at home right now and people at home that it's hard to find a space for 50 minutes to go talk to someone in private unless you're going out maybe to the car or going outside. And so you just have all these people, you know, these, these family members in the same in the same space, and maybe it's small, but trying to come up with something, um, again, some sort of schedule where you have some time um, that you have um, that you are able to do work, that you're able to take care of yourself, that you're able to exercise. Um, maybe thinking about are there ways that they can exercise then together. Or get outside maybe together um, putting together maybe a scavenger hunt for the kids you know out in the yard so you're all out there um, uh, taking advantage too of some of the the great online things right now that are happening you know the all the different celebrities and people who are reading stories because you've read that story 500 times um, to have somebody else read a story or a different story to your children um, the virtual museum tours and, and different things like that just to help alleviate the not being able to go out of the house and go to a museum, the not being able to go to a park, but bringing and, and researching and doing some of those things that you can bring into the house. Um, I read that Fender was doing free guitar lessons. So, you know, things like that just to help to help when you're 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 it you're the only person and to also lean upon on some of your some of your friends who are there is nothing you know we run support groups from time to time and there's nothing like walking into a support group because you know you are not the only person now on the planet experiencing those things so there is such a power and people who are experiencing similar things to be able to have a network with them. So if it's some other, you know, some friends or networking with, maybe they're not even people that, that you're friends with, but just people maybe finding something that, um, some connection that you can connect, a Zoom meeting or FaceTime um, with some other people, just, just to be able to, to share those feelings that, that you are feeling. And journal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One word. Journal. One word at a time, Steve. Well, oh, journal. That's a new thing. I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to try it. I like new things right now. Let me know. The universe yeah, that, is asking yeah. you to write. I'm just I saying. I know. I know. It's been years, right? Megan, you've been harping on me for a long time about that. Uh, is there anything you'd like to close with, Sarah, that we haven't said? I don't, I, I can close, but is there anything that you wanted to bring up that, that maybe we missed?
If I can, if anybody wants to call, it's 616-842-9168. Uh, um, name's Mosaic Counseling. Um, I would like to give one other number out that I think is really important, especially if you have teenagers in your household, young adults. You know, we've always had this suicide hotline that you could call, but there's a texting crisis number. And that's for people who they're probably not going to call, but they will text someone. So for teenagers and young adults, you know, the middle of the night, it's 741741 that they can just text to. A uh, really important number to make sure that your teenagers have. And thank, thank you so much for asking. Yeah. 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 Really Sarah, sure, if you could put those numbers in the co uh, comments as well, that'd be great. So anybody can grab them. Uh, and then if they are not from Ottawa County, uh, can we still reach out to you and then you would refer us into someone in Kent County or how would you go about that process? Yep, I can do that. We actually, we have some of our therapists are in Grand Rapids and Perfect. if you, and maybe someone has insurance. So yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Megan, you got anything to end with before I finish up? No, I'm just incredibly grateful for you taking time to talk to all of us. And I just encourage people to be in the space of if there was ever a time where we're all in it together and it's okay to ask for help or say I'm hurting or I can't navigate this well, that would be right now. Um, and Steve and I have told you in good times, we seek counseling in space. Um, you know, sometimes our own best thinking is gets us into the space that we're in. So I just have a lot of gratitude for your time. Thank you. Yeah, we thank appreciate you. you, Sarah, for for taking the time with us. And yeah, thank you all for tuning in uh, to this conversation of leadership, which is really a little bit different than some of our other conversations. But it's so critical to say, like, where are you at mentally, and that that mental health is just as important as your physical health, right? Yes. And so we see online right now everybody talking about what workout are you doing and. What spin class are you doing or what run are you doing? But uh, maybe we need to start talking about what journal did you do, right? Uh, and, and what does that look like for you to, to take the mental space to make sure that you stay mentally healthy? Because I think that's just as much of a battle as all the gummies I'm eating right now. So, uh, yeah. So thank you all for tuning in. This was Leadership Conversations with Megan and Steve and our special guest here today. Thank you all. We'll see you later. Bye.